Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Streams. We're going through the PS5 store. I've done a couple videos like this before where we just like went in the store and looked at all the pre-orders and said and like watched trailers and saw what was uh, looking good, what wasn't looking good, just talk about the games. We've done that a couple times, recorded, never streamed it before. I thought we might do our debut stream of this with the new brand new PS5 store, which uh, admittedly has more things coming soon than available. But, you know, I mean, there was still like a relatively, there was a solid collection, like when the system first launched. There was too many games for me to buy. I bought like three of them, plus the two uh, free games, Astro's Playroom and Bug Snacks. And like those, those got me. Like I couldn't even buy, I couldn't even buy Spider Man. And I wanted to play Spider Man, and I still do. I will buy it at some point. But I didn't have time. I didn't have time to play most of the games. Well, not most. I didn't have time to play all the games that launched on PS Five that I wanted to play. So like the launch lineup for me was not sparse. And it's cool because, uh, like, the store is just, it's a, it's connected to your dashboard like this. Like, oh, there's the dashboard. You just press down here in the store immediately. It's so much more trans, what do you call it? Tra translucent? No. It's, it's so much more connected. Which is not even close to what I was saying, but you know what it is. You know what we're talking about. What's up, Zach? What's up, Declan Perry? What's up, Rochelle? What's up, Life Phantom 742? What's up, Alan Gearhart? What's up, Fat Boy Smurf? How's it going? This is so intimate. Ooh, it's like you're in the room with me, am I right? I don't know what I'm gonna start with. I guess we should start with what is available. Because there's stuff on here that they you've definitely never seen a trailer for. So, you know, like half of this. And you know, you like you got some uh, PS5 upgrades of PS4 games like No Man's Sky, Borderlands 3, stuff of that nature. You got some your free games like Bug Snacks, Astro's Playroom. Bug Snacks only free the uh, November. So if you don't have a PS5 yet, you will have to spend twenty five dollars on Bug Snacks, which is worth it, by the way. So don't even worry about that. Hell yeah! What's up, Young Brew? What's up, Josiah Enriquez Rodriguez? How's it going? What's up, Michael Labernathy? What's up, Jean Pachel? How's it going? Um. You know, before the PS5 launched, there were two big games. I have maybe three. When did Black Ops launch? I the launch of Black Ops Cold War completely missed me. Was it was it like three days after the system launched? I don't know, but there were there was like a bunch of big games that weren't necessarily just for next gen consoles that released like right in that exact same window and it made me forget about them. And that was like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I kind of want to play. And also Watch Dogs Legion, which I wanted to play more than Valhalla. It just, it looked, it looked really good. I saw a bunch of trailers. I was, I played the first Watch Dogs and I liked it. Uh, I didn't get too much time into Watch Dogs 2. But Watch Dogs Legion, just like everything I had going for it seemed like a pretty solid entry and people seem to agree with that based on the reviews cold war launched on the 13th i believe damn also what's up ryan roberts how's it going anything good for cyber monday that's a good question actually it's weird because the ps5 did like the black friday sale but on ps5 you couldn't find the sale for like a really long time they just didn't have it up like, the games were on sale, but they didn't have their own folder. And that appears to, like, be the case again. Unless they just don't have Cyber... Well, I mean, it's like the Black Friday sale should still be going, shouldn't it? But it's it's not on the dashboard. I don't know how you would find it. If I just, uh... Let's see. If we just went to PS4 games... It's nice that they're categorized. I like that. Yeah, like, this game is $9. I'm going to assume that's part of the Black Friday sale. When it's originally 60 What's Watch Dogs? Like, I never played. It's sort of like a Grand Theft Auto kind of game, but, like, specifically revolved around hacking. 
Um, which is a good way to describe it. And which is fun. I like the first one. Like, you use your phone to, like, hack stuff. Make traffic lights change. Things of that nature. But you still, like, run around, shoot people and whatnot. It seems like the sale is still going, but, like, you can't tell. You just see a bunch of games that are on sale. Assassin's Creed Origins being $12 seems pretty damn good to me. Same with Rainbow Six Siege being 10 I have kind of wanted to get into that, but that seems like one of the games where it's too late because everybody's too good at it. And I keep saying that, and then people keep telling me, like, no, dude, really, you, like, you can step in, it's fine. I'm like, I don't believe you. I know you have that game and I don't, but I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, that's good. How about are you going to play Cyberpunk 2077? Yes. The thing with that, though, is that the PS5 version doesn't come out until later. So, like, if you get it on December 10th, even if it's on PS5, you're buying the PS4 version, which will upgrade later. Which makes no sense, because based on the last article I read, they said, like, the PS... The reason there was delayed and whatnot was that the PS5 version was done, but they still had to work on the PS4 version. In which case, why is the PS5 version coming out later? Don't understand. Don't understand it at all. Look at the Explore page. Oh, maybe that'll have it. Well, there's a whole lot of Fortnite stuff happening. This is basically just like your news thing. Oh, there's the Black Friday sale right there. And there you go. Okay, now you have everything in one place. Tremendous. They got a lot of Ultimate Editions on sale. Huge fan of your Kingdom Hearts videos. All the love from Egypt. Oh, what's up, Ahmed? How's it going? Appreciate the international attention. I'm a fan of that. Doom twenty dollars for Doom Eternal, great deal. You should get it. I get. Let's if we're gonna do Black Friday stuff, let me just like recommend some stuff. The only problem is one thing uh, that they have changed that I don't like is that you can no longer tell what a game's price is if you already own it. Previously, you could like go to the page and then go down to like what was afterwards, and then the actual price would like kind of show up in the corner. Even if you owned the game, now it doesn't do that, and so I don't know how much money these things are. It's a step back. It's, it, I feel like it's an oversight. I feel like I'm one of the only people that ever used that. But, yeah. Avengers is half off. Avengers is a pretty solid game, if you have people to play with. I would recommend that. I wish you would still show me what the deals are, man. I have too many games. Evidently. Hey, Albino, do you think Godfall is worth the full price, or would you recommend waiting for a sale? Uh, if you have two other friends who are all trying to get Godfall right now, then, like, go for it. If you don't, uh, then feel free to wait for a sale. I would say that Godfall is like a sale kind of game. That's fine. But yeah, these are all the sales. But this is like not what I actually came here to do. The sales are good if you want to look at the sales. They got lots of stuff that you probably already have uh, on sale. Or at least that's how it is for me. Let's go back in here. Let's go straight to the PS5 games only. PS5 games only. We're going to look at what's out. We're going to look at what's coming. That is the point of this stream. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you got like your usual... Like a lot of this stuff is recognizable. There's weird games here that made the jump from PS4. Like Maneater. Like why was this game immediately ready for PS5? This, this one had to hit the launch table. They really clamored to get this one up here. And then you've got Spirit of the North, which is a game I never heard of. You can watch a video of it and just be even more confused, because I looked at this a couple days ago. The thing with PS5 games, though, is that they look like they're on PS5. Even when their graphics like are, are not that good, you can sort of tell... 
That was a fantastic video. Uh, you, you can sort of tell just by like how stuff moves. Like you can tell it was built on PS5. Like I can see it in the grass. I can see it in the clearness of these rocks. Even though these technically aren't good graphics, it's still like there's a smoothness to it. You know what I mean? Like it looks like 60 frames per second. That's something I noticed with bug snacks too. But yeah, I, dude, I don't have a damn clue what this game is or what it's about. This video has all the same footage in it as the other video had, except it's repeating it twice. What are you, what's happening? Alright, you play as a fox, you activate totems. Oh yeah, play has no limits? This one seems pretty limited. This one seems a bit limited. But, uh... <laughs> I have no idea. It doesn't even... Okay, let's watch the thing. Or let's read the thing. Single-player third-person adventure game inspired by the breathtaking mysterious landscapes of Iceland. Story takes root from various pieces of Nordic folklore. Okay, Be plays an ordinary fox. Oh, damn. Becomes entwined with a magical spirit fox. Purposely have no dialogue or narration. Uniquely designed to purposely have no game. Players must breathe in their surroundings to solve various... Breathe, I'm sorry, what? To solve pu various puzzles and speculate the meaning of a lost ancient civilization. Uh, okay. Ah, 60 frames per second, there you go. Solve environmental puzzles to change the world around you. Alright. What's up, Hamza Ferris? How's it going? What's up, Zach Miller? Have you ever played Shadow of the Colossus? No, I have not. Also, what's up, Rosha? It's just a cheap version of Journey. Did you guys, like, play this? I know it's, like, part of a very va uh, vague library. Or scant library. But that doesn't mean you gotta, like, buy all the PS5 games. So, you know, still have some discerningness. Unless it's like really good and I'm shitting on it for no reason. But that is, that's not the impression I'm getting. Uh, let's... These are still coming soon. Let's skip those for now. Well, Immortals Phoenix Rising comes out in like three days. So... Oh, it comes out the second? I thought it was the third. I bought it for my fiance. She played it once and never touched that game again. That sounds about right. Immortal, this is the game from Ubisoft. This used to be called Gods and Monsters when they first uh, unveiled it. I, I I think the title shift is like a lateral move. I didn't really, I don't, it's, I don't think it's any better. Although I guess it's called Phoenix Rising, which is like what Phoenixes do, and also our main character's name is Phoenix, so it's like, ooh, puns. Why, oh, here's the official trailer. I was going to say, why don't you have any video trailers? Crumbles. Our divine power sealed away. I guarantee one of these trailers is going to have, like, copyrighted stuff in it. Need a hero. That's another reason why I wanted to do it in a stream, because then it doesn't matter. In fact, I bet this song is copyrighted. That wouldn't surprise me even a little bit. If it has words, I'm scared of it. It's a Ubisoft Breath of the Wild. That's exactly how I would describe it also. But like, it looks good. This isn't really like what, you know, you're doing. I would prefer a gameplay trailer. Because the gameplay trailer would show you that it basically is Breath of the Wild, but Ubisoft. You know, you like climb on whatever, there's a stamina wheel. Uh, it's got like puzzle vaults that are kind of like shrines. Uh, 
Uh, but I think with this game, what I've heard this game has that Breath of the Wild doesn't is like a really cool like combo situation system. You can like chain moves together and like get stuff happening. What's up, Pyroclast? How's it going? I've never seen this trailer. I didn't know it had this. Oh, what you doing? Okay, but you're gonna attack it now, or? <laughs> like, you jump in front of a snake and you're like, get ready for this! And then you just grow a pair of wings and flap there for a few seconds. It's like, yeah, you, you impressed? I'm gonna flutter you to death, bro. I am gonna get it. I'm gonna get this. Immortals Phoenix Rising, available December 3rd. You know, it seems enough like Breath of the Wild that I'll like it in comparison to the fact that I like Breath of the Wild, but it also seems like what else it has might be stuff that I like more than the stuff that wasn't in Breath of the Wild. Like the combo ability, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, that looks like I'm gonna get it. Music didn't really fit. Um... If you think it's like a serious game, then yes, but apparently the game's also like funny. Like they put comedy in it. So, I think with that in mind, then maybe it's a little more relatable. Okay, let's see. I, dude, Tesla Force, I watched this. It's basically that, that's what this is. Is like this trailer is super blurry and I'm like is that the game or is that something else okay well now it's not I'm trying to remember what this reminds me of there was like a zombie game that was exactly like this except for like the science aspect that was on ps4 that I played a little bit of I mean, it's basically Dead Ops Arcade from, like, the Black Ops minigame. But, like, it doesn't... Maybe it's fun, but it, like, it looks like the idea was conceptually good. But it looks like they didn't reach it quite. You're talking about Dead Nation Apocalypse? That is correct. That is what I was talking about. And also Dead Ops. But Dead Nation Apocalypse was like the, the standalone game. Alright, multitude of crazy perks. Over a dozen unique Lovecraftian horrors and boss monsters to complete. Or to defeat. Oh, you can play as HP Lovecraft? Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe? Has anyone in here played that? Uh, let's see. Yo, you should check out Omori. It's coming out on Christmas and it's gonna be on Switch and PS4. Oh, what's up, Kayla? Also, what is that? What the hell is that Minecraft looking game? Oh, Gunya Fighter? Dude, if you love gang beasts, you're gonna sit through half the trailer of this game. Gunya Fighter! The best PS5 has to offer. It's like your limbs have jelly physics and you like punch each other and it's like a fighting game. Basically. It looks like a better version of Super Smash Bros. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is the game I want to get pro in. Check it out, the new trailer just came out of Dawn. I don't know how to explain it. Would it be on the PS5 store? 
PS5 ならではのコントローラーハプティックフィードバックアダプティブトリガルすることができるそして攻撃ボタンを押し込むことで自身の攻撃にリンクした指先でのリングショックを楽しむことができるぞ。But in reality, those features are like really cool. ルル拳で語り合え、腕試しのバトルモード。Dude, it should be. Everybody would tune in to watch it. Alright, I'm,、uh, I'm done、uh, you know, melting my eyeballs after that. Okay, let me see if Omori is in this list of coming soon here. We're gonna go back, we're gonna go through and look at every single one of these games. Just about. But just. So we're like.、Mm, singularly focused right now. Okay, it's not here. But these are also just PS5 games. So maybe it wouldn't be here. Although I'm sure most, some of them like, would also come out on PS4. Mmm, damn. Alright, well, show me the PS5s. Where were we at? Oh, yeah, we looked at Gunya Fighter. Dude, Astro's Playroom is really good. I recommend that you play Astro's Playroom when you get a PS5 just to really show you what the controller can do. Because it takes full advantage of like everything that's going on and it feels real nice in your hands. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Of course, they had to make a poker game. Do you have any idea how many poker games are on the PlayStation? I've played like three of them. I've seen like 20 of them. Mmm, damn. It's free, that's a great price. It is. Astro's Playroom, that is. There was a poker game on 360, it was so fun. Yeah, me and Fish used to play a lot of prominence poker. I think that game was like 10 bucks. Came out like four or five years ago. That was my go to poker game. This $25 for a poker game is like, nah. No, thank you. Unless you're really gonna like make it super realistic. And like a definitive experience, you know. But most poker games are just like the lowest resolution characters you can possibly imagine, and it's just like the game. Because that's really all you have to do, because Texas Hold'em itself is such a like sells itself kind of game. Like you don't need the bells and whistles, but you should still do the bells and whistles so that it is more pleasant to play than any other. Situation. You know what I mean? What's up, Master Shattuck? How's it going? I am a Texas Hold'em fan. I've probably played like a hundred hours across my lifetime. So it's a fun card game. I like to win money. I've played it in real life a few times. Uh, yeah, Man Eater for some reason. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is like. I sort of want to get it. It's one of those games I'm never going to have time for. It flows like a river. It's like if I don't get it now, I'm never going to. Unless it's maybe like a year from now when it's $11 on a Black Friday sale. What games do you plan on streaming in December? I guess I should stream Cyberpunk. I'm, not st I'm still not sure how that's gonna work. I know they have a、uh, like、copyright music off toggle thing for streamers, which is real nice. I just don't know if that means that I'm gonna do like two separate files or. Maybe I should, because then I have.、Uh, 
some insight. Be like, oh, well, last time I did this, I was a corpo, and I was not able to unlock this particular line of dialogue or whatever. I feel like I would pick Corpo as, like, my first choice. So I can finagle with the rich people of the city, you know what I mean? I want to earn money. I want to be rich. You know, why would you, pick out why would you pick an outcast like a nomad? Why do you want to start from the very bottom? Holding off buying games because Cyberpunk. I feel like a lot of people are doing that. And I get it, man. I do. Have you played Sackboy? I have. Sackboy is pretty good. It's super stylish. It's, um... Official news. No, I'm gonna need you to show me... I don't want the story trailer. It's the announcement trailer. All right, introduce Sackboy, I guess. And I, I don't know what this is. What's up, Anthony Carver? How's it going? Any games you're getting during the sale so far? Uh, the only game I bought during the sale was Grand Theft Auto V. I'm really excited to have this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about Sackboy's return to play. You know, obviously nothing on PS5 is on sale at all because, uh, you know, it's not even been a month since that was out. Sackboy, shot to fame as the lead character in the hugely successful Little Big Planet series. Mm, but yeah. Big Planet the Sackboy game, game is really stylish. I played it after I uploaded my every game I played this month where I talked about it being style over substance. The next level I played was a level that was completely synced to the song Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. To do this, we started with Sackboy himself. And it was a, uh, it was an experience. It was pretty damn good. Game, we needed a character that was incredibly responsive. So we said from day one, this game has to run at. Oh, they do have grappling hooks in this game. As well as being incredibly responsive. I played that level. Set of controls that gave you loads of options, so that you could choose. Like all the platforms were like jumping around perfectly in rhythm. The enemies were synced. They were like running back and forth in time. Every checkpoint was like, awesome like made you progress further into the song. It was, uh, you also need a it was super good. Explore. I hope more levels are like that. The PlayStation 5 has I don't know if that was a one-off. Push the visuals of Craft World further than ever before to create a stunning handcrafted adventure. I was impressed. Now this is a big game with loads It's like that one level is worth me buying the game. The Every single stage is stuffed with fresh challenges to overcome, baddies to battle, new power-ups to master, and secrets to discover. Mm, but yeah, that's Sackboy. It's a good game. It's um, It does not have multiplayer until later this year or early next year. I guess that got delayed because they couldn't make it work, which, you know, Sumo's track record with online multiplayer is pretty dog shit. So I guess it's better to just not have it and make it work than what they did with Little Big Planet 3, which was to launch it and then have it not work for like a solid year after it came out. So, yeah. I've heard a lot about the pathless. I watched the trailer. I don't think I saw this one, unless this is the trailer. The only trailer. Like, this game got reviewed well is... I don't like the traversal. Because it's like, if you want to go fast, you just have to keep shooting your bow at stuff. And I don't appreciate that. Like, you have to aim and, like, shoot at these things in order to still be fast, because that's what activates your sprint. And it's like, no, I don't want to do that. That seems like the kind of mechanic that's like, oh, this is fun for five minutes, and then, have, you know, two hours later, you're like, can I just, I just want to hold my analog stick. So, Master Bruce has it going? You know, the boss encounters seem okay. The puzzles are probably fine. 
I'm just hung up on the traversal. Ooh, the tall ones. I mean, I get it, you're a master archer. I wish you're, you know, you didn't tie that ability to your legs. Like, if you didn't have a bow, would you just be in a wheelchair? Rolling down the hill? But yeah, that's the pathless. I, I will not be getting that. I understand it conceptually. And then I haven't even gotten the PS5 upgrade for Borderlands 3, because uh, it's like a gigantic download or something. I don't know, there was some reason I didn't do it. I don't remember why. It might be the fact that I have no plans to play this game ever again. Could be. Um, what is Concept Destruction? Dirt 5 is over there also. I like... I like some racing games. Well, it wouldn't be a PlayStation console if it didn't bring all the shitty indie games with it. Drive it with care. How do you even... How do you even know if you're gonna kill? I don't even. I don't see a health bar. I guess the, maybe the battery is your health bar, but this dude's getting flipped around at the bottom, and his battery's not going down at all. How do you know when you're about to kill somebody? They're all made of cardboard. They're not making very many impact noises, unless I just can't hear it. They probably just took the game sound out of the trailer. It looks very next gen, absolutely. Look at these high res images. This should not be one of the first indie games you put on your next gen console. But there was a PS4 version. Any indie game that, like, got the dev kit. Like, it's gonna go to PS5 also. Driving miniature cars made of cardboard, crashing them into each other to earn points by destroying them. Wow. So it's like Twisted Metal without weapons. That's awesome. That's amazing. You should take a look at a game called Hellpoint. It's a Souls Light, but set in space. Some weird cultish shit going on. I think I heard about that. I think I watched that already. I have immediately forgotten, but I think I did watch that. What is Undead Horde? Show me. My name is Orson. Last okay. of my kind and banished by the Paladins. Why do I look like Shovel Knight on that left there? Infallibility well, it's exactly like Shovel Knight. Destruction of my inept cage. I am a necromancer. A you know, I really wish all these trailers were at the now same volume. I will command my undead minions into battle until the living are no more. I will raid their villages and plunder their treasures. I will take down even their most powerful servants. And join them into my undead army. Village by village, castle by castle, we shall conquer. Okay. We shall take back what once was ours. I will do all this and restore the lost glory of the undead. The world will be ours again. Um... I was about to say that looks like garbage, and then but then some of the conceits were like looking kind of okay. 
I'm getting mixed vibes from that game. Like, you know, maybe not $17. Maybe I would get that for 5 just to see what's up. I definitely don't need a free PS5 upgrade for Mortal Kombat 11. A game where you can't run. Fortnite is still free. That's amazing. Dead by Daylight's on sale. Oh, I didn't know that game was on PS5. What is... Okay, the letters on top here, I would not have pronounced them as Jeej. Would, would not have been my first guess. What is Build this? Build your own judge. Build your own Jeej. Okay. This reminds me of a... What's that game called? What is that game called? Is it Streets of Rage? Judge for yourself. Judge for yourself. That's a Y. You can't just say it's a different letter. That's not how English works. Mm, damn. Have you heard of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim? Yes, but I'm not interested in the gameplay at all. LMAO Albino play Fortnite. Oh damn, I'm gonna play Fortnite right now. That's how we'll end the stream is me playing Fortnite. I have this game on PS4. I don't know why they're acting like I don't. Oh, this is a try. This is, it's just, it, this is a PS4. This isn't even... Or maybe I only have the trial. I don't know, but the, the, don't, don't bother with that. It's a game where you throw rocks at things. That's it. That's all that it is. Uh, let's go into the coming soon section. Let's look ahead. Although, before we do that, I guess let's do the coming soons that are, like, already in here. That are in this. First of all, first, Temtem is good. Oh, dude, that comes out on the 7th? That is not that far away. Um, I do recommend, if you don't have this on PC, and you don't have the means to get it on PC, I do want to say... That Temtem is a very solid Pokemon clone. Uh, I wonder if they've messed with XP at all because when because you, you can play this game completely co-op also, which is which is what's cool about it. It's an MMO. But when you and your friend are in a double battle, you guys both get half XP, which means that you're actually getting overall half the experience you'd get if you played solo and sent both of your own Temtem out in the double battle formats. So I wonder if they ever fixed that or if they just don't care. But in general... In general, Temtem is a good game. Like, I played it for, like, 40 hours on PC. I don't think I'll get it on PS5, because I already have it on PC. But it is... Pretty so Pretty solid. I like... I like when games do the PlayStation Plus, uh, give you, like, 10% off if you pre-order. I think most games should do that. Like, I'm still gonna pre-order it the day before it comes out. But I enjoy... I just like that. You know, it lets me save a little bit of money. Would you give it a 10 out of 10? I'm gonna need you to exit this stream and never come back. Just kidding, that was solid. Alright, I was a uh, hit or miss on Deathloop, and then I looked at the description 
Because this is the game where it's like, you gotta, it's sort of like a roguelike, because you have to kill the eight targets in a certain amount of time, and if you don't, then you start over, and you gotta, like, optimize your run and whatnot. All while an AI assassin is trying to just, like, run over basically wherever you are and try and kill you. But what I learned from looking at the store page is that you can play as that assassin in another player's world. It's like PvP. It's sort of like Souls Invasions. Like, you can take over and then try and locate the character in their world and, like, stop them. That part in particular might sell me on this game. And you, they have an option to, like, make it so it's always... You know, they do what Souls should do. They make it so that you can play offline without losing out on other aspects. Good morning, Black Reef. So, like, that thing alone sort of sells me on this game already. So, if you got a friend and you want to try and take them out while they're doing this whole thing, like, that just seems like some of the best, like, immersive 1v1 PvP that you could probably even think of. I'm a big fan of the concept. And no matter how I try to escape, they always cut me down. But I'm one stubborn m Feels like the more that was shown, the better the game got. I think we that yes, and also I think we should internalize the fact that we live in an age where games are actually getting better as the development time progresses. Like they're making significant changes and alterations in the time between announcing it versus it coming out. Like, Avengers was like that, uh, Godfall was like that, because Godfall used to be a lot worse looking when it was first unveiled. But they re they released like four or five different trailers, and you could see the progress made in each one. So, like, your first impression of a game will not necessarily be what it turns out to be. Games look better after development. Yeah, it sounds sim like a simple obviousness thing. But there's, like, a tangible... I'm feeling, like, more so than in other times in development history. Where, like, you know, because sometimes it's the opposite. You know, the game gets announced and it's got like these CGI trailers, and you're like, oh, this looks amazing. And then the game comes out and you're like, oh, this is a downgrade. We're living in the opposite time. Where games surprise you when they launch. And I think that's a better time to live in. When does Deathloop launch? It launches like May 21st or something like that. So we got quite a ways to go on it. But you know, I am like looking out for it. All right, let's get back into the coming soon stuff. Let's get this going. Wait, these this is a line. Can you just like show me all of them in a here we go. This is what I'm after right here. All right, nice. Uh, let's go down the line. We're going to talk about some games. Horizon Forbidden West, this is one of the, uh, you know, flagship, like... For me, this is, like, what the PS5... This this defines the next-gen console experience, like, what PS5 games can and should look like. Or can and will, I guess, depending on, like, what's going on. Like, graphics-wise... Captured on a PS5. I think this is the gold standard a lot of games will try to live up to. And then what's awesome is that the original Horizon Zero Dawn was sort of like that for the PS4, and now if you go back and look at it, you're like, dude, this game looks awful. <laughs> Just because stuff has come out since then. Like, th in the first quarter of the PS5, the first, like, year or two that it comes out, this is gonna be, like, the golden pony of the race. 
And then, like, four years after that, games are going to start coming out where you're like, dude, Horizon Forbidden West looks like trash compared to these games. We're going to make such strides, you know what I mean? Official news, Journey to the Forbidden West. Is this the trailer? I'm watching this, there's like 40% of the reason I'm watching this is I want to see the crabs. Show me the hermit crabs again. Where's Goodbye Volcano High? I want to see how bad that's going to be. I don't think that's on here. Yet. Show me the hermit crab. I need, everyone needs to see how good these hermit crabs look. I mean, that also is just like, damn, dude. Look at them! Look at them! It's like the start of a Disney animated short. I want to watch this before I watch Toy Story 4 in theaters. I'm buying this game specifically because of how good the hermit crabs look. That's my number one... Also, big, big ass turtle coming out. Look at the water fall off his back, dude. Look at the moss. Until it destroys us all. It's too good. It's too to good. This, this is the kind of trailer you watch, you're like, dude, I'm so pumped for the next eight years of my fucking life. Playing experiences like this. No secret, I won't unlock. Do you got some like digital fireworks dragons? Look at that. No barrier, I won't cross. This mission is mine. Oh alone. yeah. If I falter, if I fail. Visually, it does look amazing, just hope it plays as good as it looks. I mean, it only has to play, like, a little bit better than the original Horizon Zero Dawn for it to be amazing. Realistic crab AI? Hell yeah. This is the best part of the game. There's no question about it. When I get the first chance I get to go to the beach, I'm gonna look at some hermit crabs. But whatever comes. You know, I don't real sure you got me inspired back into playing the keyboard piano. It feels good learning again. Hell yeah, dude. I will be ready. You keep that shit up. Appreciate it. All right, yeah. So that was that was the big winner of like the original uh, PS5 game showcase where they did like the 25 games and whatnot. Second place was Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Although it was first place for me because I'm more interested in Ratchet and Clank. I want to check out Gran Turismo 7's trailer again, unless there's a new one. Just for me, the interior of the car was like. It didn't just look like a real car, it looked better than a real car. This looks better than a real car. Like, I've been inside a real car before. It didn't, it didn't look half as good as this. I'm feeling like this is ray tracing in action. Like, specifically, the glean, the shine, like, that's ray tracing. That's what ray tracing does for you. We've... We're in a console generation where we can actually make things look better than reality. <laughs>
dude, this has better graphics than real life. Like, this, that's where we're at. Oh my god, it's there. Okay, this is... Wait, is this new? I think they stopped the trailer beyond this part. Or before this part. In the original. You change the car, look at those interior... I'm gonna buy this game just for the interiors, man. Just to have some cool backdrops on my TV. I'm gonna get some posters made of these interiors. You got like the Clash of Clans set up here. But do you like go into an actual race? Or is it just showing you the features? Okay, actual race, here we go. I feel like maybe you want to turn the sound effects down when you start this game up. Unless you just really like hearing BANG! You know, for like the entire rest of your life. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. I don't. Dude, I played Gran Turismo like on the arcade version like 20 years ago. That's pretty much my experience with Gran Turismo specifically. But, I mean, look how good... It's, it's all about how good it looks for me. That's 100% that's of what, if anything, was going to sell me on this game. It's just that it looks good. Alright. This looks amazing, but the first-person view is going to make me hella sick. Well, I mean, you, I'm pretty sure you can change the view. I think you've been able to do that since the first Gran Turismo. Alright, you show me Rift Apart. I wish we had release dates for half these games. I'm really not trying to think that, like, most of these games are co aren't coming out for, like, six months. You know? Like, when is Ratchet and Clank Ripped Apart? There's games that have been revealed, release dates been revealed for May. Are you telling me this comes out later than May? Can we get some surprise release dates out here? I want, I want this game coming out in, like, January. Give me a January on Ratchet and Clank. I'll take early February if I have to. Yo, Albano, you gonna play Honey Pop 2? <laughs> Is that out yet? Yeah. You all right back there? Dude, look at these graphics. You think Horizon Forbidden West looks amazing? These graphics rival it. Albeit in a more cartoony way. Ooh, look at that ray tracing on Clank's face! I mean, we can't be that far. Ratchet. The dev on Twitter said it was like 98% complete. Ratchet and Clank? Ooh. How do I steer this thing? Ask nicely. Slow down, please. That's not listening. Oh, I cannot wait to platinum this game. Some games, you look at them, you're like, I'm a platinum this game. This game is going to be one of those games. Crash 4 was one of those games for me. And that took 70 hours, but we did it. Astro's Playroom, I platinumed. That only took like 4 hours. Bug Snacks was an instant platinum. Well, it is certainly not this is an instant platinum. This game is gonna age better than Horizon stylistically. Probably, yeah. But yeah, dude, that's Ratchet and Clank. This, this is where, this is why we're here, fellas. This is why we're all in. I just noticed you have earrings on. Um, but this is why we're all getting Ratchet and Clank. It's so that we can play as whatever this chick's name is. Just saying. Oh my god. 
find a girl who looks at you the way Ratchet looks at Clank. Uh, <laughs> Clank looks retarded. <laughs> his head is like halfway into his neck. Mmm, damn. She's also gonna be a body pillow seller? Oh, God. Let's not take it that far. I know, you know, I just imply stuff. I don't actually, like, think about the reality of the situation. Where it's like, oh, yeah, that stuff is definitely going to happen. Final Fantasy sixteen. this is, like, people think it's a tired joke. They're like, oh, this game's gonna come out in ten years. This game will come out in three years. It's like it it will not be before that. It's not a comedy, it's just how it is. But Final Fantasy 16, I think from like a gameplay perspective, is looking like something I'm gonna want. Dominant. And only the dominant. I heard it's coming next year. That seems unbelievable to me. Question orders. We follow them. Definitely not till like November, December. If it was gonna be next year. Surprise release Final Fantasy 16 comes out December 24th, 2020. Everybody goes ballistic. This will be a bitter fight. You should not be out of doors. FF16 has a lot of we gameplay have already. Have they released new trailers since the original one? Your father will be expecting us. I am Joshua's shield. I'm sworn to protect him. Yes. What I'm seeing here is individual attacks in a combo rather than holding a button down. What I'm seeing here is not Final Fantasy XV combat, which I approve of. Without the blessing of the Mother Crystal, we cannot defend our realm from the spread of the Black. I really liked the combat from the Final Fantasy VII remake. I was a fan of that. Imperial Vipers. Do they really mean to invade? It still wasn't like exactly what I wanted. Cause I have any Kingdom Hearts fan that like didn't know Final Fantasy until Kingdom Hearts wants just wants like Kingdom Hearts combat in a Final Fantasy game. And Final Fantasy VII Remake was, like, the closest we've gotten to that. Even though it's still sort of nothing like it. Second life on the fire. But... That's impossible. Impossible! That's impossible! Look at this impossibility! Impossible. The legacy of the crystals. I mean, the story makes no sense to me, but it will when we, like, play it correctly. And get to see every aspect of it. I'm excited for a Final Fantasy 16. Maybe if they release a demo, which they should definitely should. I will, the demo will seal, will seal me either way, obviously. Hell yeah. I like that dude. Of all the characters, I think that's a cool dude. That's a cool dude right there. Any of the other dudes, like, whatever. But that dude? That dude was a cool dude. Would I recommend Demon Souls? Yes, I would. This dude? Look at this cool dude. He's got it going on. That's gonna be somebody people remember for future games. 
I don't know who that is. Um... <laughs> I don't want to say anything about that. Um... An all-new main... Ooh, they have so much game info. An all-new mainline title in the legendary Final Fantasy series. Final Fantasy 16 is coming as a single-player action RPG. Oh my god, dude, I didn't know any of that. That's crazy. I I can't believe this wasn't a launch title. I thought for sure this was going to come out as soon as the console did. Because it's like, what are you delaying this for? I guess it's just not done. House cast episode... No, I don't need... I mean, maybe we... Let me see this. Does this, like, show off the gameplay? Hello, and welcome to an episode of Housecast. Uh, game director. Yeah, let me go... Let's uh, skip to... Hey, just uh, out of curiosity, are you going to show the game at all? Back, do you have any fond memories of these oh, yeah, these the, they, these people made a Riso oh, gun. That was a launch title for so PS4. I just, just over, like, 10 years ago. That's great. I'm going to need you to show me some... I like that this is more like YouTube. You can skip ahead on stuff. Why are you talking about Riso gun? Lifts the curtain on Returnal. Oh, really? Because it seems like you're putting the curtain back on it and just lifting it on Riso Gun instead. You guys talking a lot about Riso Gun? What if I go over here? You guys still talking about Riso Gun right now? There's not much trailer left, dude. You gonna show some some Returnal anytime soon? More house casts on the journey to Returnal. So, um, oh my, that. oh, he just Thank said Returnal. Know. He does know the game exists. All right, that was pointless. Show me the announcement trailer. Oh. You know, the announcement trailer had like a little bit of gameplay in it. You know, you watch this trailer, and just the gameplay it gives you is not what you expect from the trailer. My death. The crash. The attack. My death. It was sort of jarring. But, like, I'm intrigued by any roguelike, basically. Even death is more that concept alone is enough to make me look closer to a game to see if I would want to get it. Each time I awake, this planet seems somehow different. Is it changing? This world but what's most important is the like permanent progression unlocks. You gotta give me relevant stuff that like I get to keep on a run-to-run -run basis, whether it's upgrades, power-ups. But I cannot lose hope. You know, new item unlocks, whatever it is. But see, look, it's a third-person shooter. And it doesn't look like it would be one. choice is to keep fighting. To keep looking for answers. My only hope is to break the cycle. This reminds me more of, like, Risk of Rain 2. And I did not like that game. So I'm gonna hope it's not like that. At least in the ways that matter. Also, we have no idea when this game's coming out still. How do you not have a release date? It's okay. A roguelike shooter. Both the planet and your equipment change. Alright. Engage enemies, bullet hell, yeah, scavenge alien tech for upgrades, okay, forge personal connection with the planet, yeah, alright. Let's do some tree hugger shenanigans while we're in here. Tempest 3D audio tech, baby. I need to get, I need to get that headset. I should have bought it uh, when I got my PS5. Adaptive tree, guys, and the happy to feed the backer. 
and we'll see how good that ends up being. Yeah, still coming soon. <sighs> Was Bug Snacks as great as we all hoped it would be? Yes. As good as I hoped it would be, anyway. Okay, dude, listen, I we gotta I, I gotta skip Resident Evil Village for a second. We gotta go to Ghostwire Tokyo. Because Ghostwire Tokyo is... Because I was talking about the difference between the initial CGI trailer and the actual gameplay that it showed later. So this... No, it's official news over here. Ghostwire Tokyo revealed... Because this is fantastic looking. This looks like real and whatnot. This was the original thing that they showed. Like, dude, I would eat that sushi. It's got this awesome cinematic trailer that, like, sets the stage for the story. It's very cool. You know, everybody's getting taken left behind style. And then we got monsters and whatnot. Just from a lore perspective, I'm into it. I love Japanese horror. I'm a big fan of like yokai as a concept. You know, onis. Uh, like just their whole concept of demons seems like so much scarier than ours. So yeah, that's what that... But then you see the actual trailer. And it tells you what's happening when you're actually going to play the game. I'm hoping that, like Godfall, this is going to look better and better as it gets closer to release. You see things others can't. Because you can see that it's just, like, downscaled. Like, obviously it's not CGI anymore. It makes me wonder, though, if, like, the cutscenes themselves are kind of done in that CGI style, but then it just kind of shifts when you play the game. Like, Kingdom Hearts did that. The opening intro of the, and outro of the Kingdom Hearts games are, like, this really over-stylized graphics that don't actually translate to the gameplay. So who can say, man? Let's hope for it, you know what I mean? Like, I am still 100% gonna get this. It's exactly creepy enough. Like, it's what I want. Also, this song is amazing. Perfectly thematic. Ah, uh, yes. That, that is everything I want in Japanese horror, from a lore perspective. Like, I, I'm still 100% gonna get it. I wish... Uh, I wish it was coming out soon. I wish we knew the release date. I mean, it, it still could. It says release date 2020, but that's just the placeholder thing. That's what they do when they don't have a release date yet. But then it's like, what else was there? I swear to God, there was one that just said it was coming soon. Because this said... Yeah, because that just is coming soon. The other one says 2020. So are they shooting for 2020? They're kind of running out of time. But 
but it might just be the difference between like still just they don't know the release date it said 2021 it said 2021 in the trailer and then it said 2020 down here We got lots of conflicting information to work with. Um, I was extremely excited for Project Athia, which is still a working title. It's also a Square Enix thing. This seems like a game that's probably not coming out for a while. What do you think is going to come out first, Final Fantasy 16 or this? I would think this. Look at them shoes. You ain't never had Plant Mancy on a main character in a game before. Like not not like this. Look, she got dude, she got flowers coming out of her ass. I am so sold on the concept alone. dude pregnant with fire look at that that dude got knocked up by a fire demon and she is about to give birth mm, but yeah like that just using vines to do stuff i'm so about it We'll see what the actual gameplay looks like. All we know is what it's like to just sort of jump on little rocks a little bit. Working title. You don't. E you could at least give me some info. This game doesn't even know what it's about yet. Oh boy. Um. Here's the deal with Resident Evil Village. I'm very excited for it. Do we know when this is releasing? It still just says 2020. So it's probably not going to. Resident Evil Village in 2021, okay. April 2021 is the rumored release. Ooh. But the forest gave them the dark cold of silence. The bushes and I'm all for this too. It looks like it's in first person like Biohazard was. Free of mother's grasp and vanished into the trees. Mother's worried cries faded fast as the girl ran on over vine under branch and into the forest what is it with that creepy story it's just a local tale it's just a story honey <laughs> what are you getting all scared for <laughs> Okay, but that dude literally shot you in the chest. You get your head blown off. Wait, wait, I'm friendly. You just like put your head back on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, look at that. Look at that goat. That goat's my favorite part of the game now. I'm just here for the goat. You know me, if there's like an inconsequential animal in the game, that's the whole reason I buy the game. Hermit crabs for Horizon. And goats for Resident Evil. Hey, 
actually. Uh, I'm here for a woman with big booba. <laughs> big booba! Sorry. What? Why? Hey, how come you did that? Chris, what'd you do that for? That was my wife. <gasps> my wife! Oh, no! Chris? Chris Redfield? Um, okay. Dude, couldn't be more excited for this. Harry Potter. I'm sorry, do you not have the trailer here? Why don't you have... You had it... I could have sworn I watched the trailer on here already. Maybe not. But dude, the Hogwarts game is gonna be so good. Uh, it's gonna be so good. Immersive open world action RPG set in the world first introduced in the Harry Potter books embark on a journey through familiar and new locations you explore and discover fantastic beasts, customize your character, craft potions, master spell casting. Upgrade talents. It's an RPG, fellas. I know it just said. I know it said that before, but like that confirms it. You're gonna do like RPG stuff, oh, dude. What house are you, dude? Yeah, you're gonna have to pick a house, aren't you? Ooh. Do you think they'll just give you the same test that's on like the Pottermore website, or will they just let you pick? I mean, they'll probably just let you pick. Um, I am a Slytherin. I took the test live while I was playing Kingdom Hearts once. And it said I was a Slytherin, so that's what's going on there. So I might have to just go with it. I might have to stay true to myself. You know. Yeah, I mean, like, Ravenclaw is for sluts, and Hufflepuff is for, like, basic bitches, so. Gryffindor is for cops. So I am Slytherin. Slytherin is for people with ambition, drive, determination. Sorry, it's the only good class. I mean, I guess Gryffindor is also a good class. If you want to be like a justice person. Um, I have absolutely no interest in Pragmata. It's going to be the next like Death Stranding kind of game. Hood Outlaws and Legends look sorta okay. It looks kinda neat. I thought it would be more... Because it says it's only two teams of four players. I thought it would be sorta more... There would be more squads than that. I thought it would be like a full Battle Royale situation. We but it's apparently just like a team deathmatch plus Ghosts. PvE. Running Plus, like, the straight, I don't know, something. Of a corrupt state. Down, don't shed a tear. They count, ration, manipulate. The night and They've taken everything from those they claim to protect. But I am interested Still in this game. Authority like, it might also be really source. annoying. But that's also just all multiplayer games. We are wraiths. We bypass defenses and strike at the heart. Like you gotta plan out your heist. Knowing that another team is also trying to plan that heist. I wonder if there's only like one location and you both have to fight over it. Or if there's like multiple locations sprawled out across some sort of big map. And the people call us heroes. And there's a chance you may not even run into each other. 
to others, we are rivals. Like, I do think this looks good. I might buy it if I can get other people to buy it. If you could play with your friends, like, against your friends, that would be sick. If you got, like, eight people together and they did a 4v4, that would be pretty... That would be, like, how I would like to do it. If you can do private lobbies. I hope... If you can't do private lobbies, I will be less intrigued. New maps, characters, game modes, and events, post-launch support, dude. Depending on how popular it is. I mean, it seems like the type of game that would get popular. Um, somebody mentioned Stray, dude. Dude, wait, do they have any more? Okay, no, yeah, I want to read, well, okay, let me watch it for, like, context for you guys, and then I want to read what it says about it, because that's what's going to tell me what kind of game this actually is. Hey, oh yeah. Hmm, Kena next? Fine, we can do Kena next. I'm also interested in Kena. I also I hope that's another one of those games that like starts to look better as it goes along. Cause the cutscene aspects of it look really good, but then the gameplay kinda looks basic. But I wonder if they'll fine tune that. Oh, this is so my game. Dude, I'm a cat person. But also just the robots are cool. Mm, kitty? Uh, so adorable. And then you watch that and you're like, okay, well, what the hell kind of game is that? So let's find out. Lost, alone, and separated, a stray cat must untangle an ancient mystery. Oh, really? Okay. Stray is a third-person cat adventure game set amidst the detailed neon-lit alleys of a decaying cyber city and the murky environments of a seedy underbelly. Rome's surroundings high and low defend against unforeseen threats. All right and solve the mysteries of this unwelcoming place inhabited by nothing but unassuming droids and dangerous creatures. I didn't see no dangerous creatures in that trailer. See the world through the eyes of a stray and interact with the environment in playful ways. Be stealthy, nimble, silly, and sometimes as annoying as possible with the strange inhabitants. So it's like untitled goose game, sort of. Along the way, the cat befriends a small flying drone. With the help, the duo try to find a way out. All right. So it's like, it'll be like a third person, like sort of puzzle adventure game then. Damn, I mean, it says the studio is mostly made of cats, so I think this will be authentic. You know, if they want to get cats right, it should be developed by, by cats as well. So that works. Um, Kina? Is there anything new for you? Oh, look at all this media. I do like that some of the games, at least, are, are like kind of consistently updated with what you can view on them. This wasn't really one of those things, but... Oh my god, look at the cute little rot. Dude, they're called- they're so cute and they're called the rot. That's disgusting. Do they like- 
decay? Or is it just like when they poop, it's just the most foul thing you've ever smelled in your life? You can help or are they just stars. gross? <laughs> they have really disgusting habits. Storm, right? I have I couldn't have less interest in that game. See like that platforming they just did, that is what makes me think this isn't that polished. But hopefully it will become more polished. And also the combat's kinda meh. But I love the look. I like the rolling if it's got invincibility frames. I think this could be fun. But like just from the, uh, you know, screenshots, you're looking at something that's going to be pretty nice. You know what I mean? Oh my god, they're so cute. Not the kids. The kids are gross, disgusting. Pump them off a cliff. But the little black things they're holding, oh my god. Oh, they're so fluffy. Okay, story-driven action adventure. Exploration, fast-paced combat. Grow a team of spirit companions. Okay, uncover the secrets. Key features, build your team, find and collect rot to gain powerful abilities. So would those that they do they... They're like... So it's just about finding as many, and then, well, I guess what I'm asking is like, you collect rot in certain locations, and then just like the more you have, the more powerful you are. Like, does it matter how many you get? Are they like extra things you can just get more of as collectibles, sort of, to like trade for upgrades or whatnot? Or uh, okay, and then explore forgotten village. Fast-paced combat. We'll see about it. We'll see about it. What's up, Carrie Penny? How's it going? Uh, okay, I have not looked at this. This, like, just got announced. Please show me what this is. Okay, so it's Shadow of the Colossus, then. I never played Shadow of the Colossus, but like I know what it is. And this is that. You know, nice sense of scale. It's a bit too blizzardy for my taste. Like, just there's snow in the way of all the graphics. You know what I mean? Like, it's too powdery. What do you What do you got for me? Boss climbing open world where you play as a lone hero to the whatever. Never ending winter. That's see, that's the worst part. Arriving with only the clothes on your back. Would be okay. Overcome impossible odds to climb atop and defeat the massive beasts. Climb, glide, swim. Climb on virtually anything. Ascend to the tops of mountains. Okay. Swim. Don't swim too long though, or your swim could become your last. Oh, threatening, bro. 
Dude, you better watch out when you go swimming, bro. That swim could be your last. There ain't no lifeguards in this game, bro. Bring your floaties, cuz. <laughs> Oh, Zach just donated thirty dollars. Said just wanted an even two hundred. Oh, well, you got it. Not only did you get it, you sec well. I mean, you already had the top spot, but you like super secure the top spot. Zach will probably be the champion of November. Let it be known far and wide. You know, travel everywhere to spread the information. Just don't swim, because that swim might be your last. Um, all right. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not gonna play that. Good for you, but, like, I'm not gonna play that. What is Tribes of Midgard? Stand against Ragnarok. Oh, this is the game that, like, sort of looked like... Well. It sort of looked like something. Alright, so you can build your little encampment. That's cool. I kind of, I just, I kind of just don't like the graphics. But from a gameplay perspective, it seems like there's stuff happening here that's alright. Like, I don't think, it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with the gameplay. And it looks multiplayer also. But is there online multiplayer? Okay, just say hi to a deer, I guess. Show me a co op survival action RPG. Okay, up to 10 player co op? Holy shit. Who knows that? Who even knows that many people? Hidden gods, abundant materials, plays living in a whatever the last bastion that protects the whatever. You'll need to explore the craft though, but prepare to defend the all the giants seeking to whatever. Discover ancient relics? Okay, face shot. So is the point just to like defend your camp? Do you are you meant to like explore all over the place? Gather materials, forge new equipment, reinforce your village. Stop the legions of hell from invading your village at nightfall. Okay, so like every night you just defend it from like an onslaught or whatever? Okay. Create entire base layouts. I mean, yeah, I guess you would like expand your village too. Face a variety of enemies while exploring the world and loot them for rewards. Engage menacing giants. Defeat them before they destroy the seed of Yggdrasil, which you, as I assume you build your village around. So maybe you're not, so maybe the movement is like not, like you can't just pack your town up and move it because the tree is wherever it is and you gotta protect it. It seems okay, especially if you, if you call up nine other people like, dude, we gotta get tribes of Midgard. And then all nine of them in unison are like, yeah! And then you all... All right, and then you all become available at the same time, which would never happen, ever. Whoever. You can't gather nine people together and all have the, all of them have the same schedule. Not unless you're paying them. That's the only way. If you pay your friends to play this game, then you can be like, all right, guys, Wednesday nights, you got to be available. Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, what do we know about Little Devil Inside? I do want to, like, read it 
after we see it again. Because I sort of underrated this game in my ga in my ranking of the PS5 games that were coming out. But I think that I'm more interested in it than I let on. I mean, at least if that game's got 10-player co-op, then you know it's online. It's not like you're gonna gather that many people in your house. That's not even possible. Pretty sure that's illegal in a lot of uh, a lot of states now. This is a game that, like, you can watch, and just, like, everything you see makes you more questions. Like, is the game really just this much variety to it? Is it not just one thing? In terms of, like, controls? Gross. Mm, damn. Hello, dude, going through COVID right now, and it sucks. Damn. Wish you a speedy recovery, dude. This is a cool idea for a video stream. I like it. Oh, thanks, that boy. It's some you can really only do like once every six months. With like a bunch of new stuff coming out on the horizon. Okay, so tell me what this game is. Victorian-like era industrial advancements. Creatures, monsters, and other mysterious life forms do exist. Oh my god. Humans go missing. Creatures are sighted. Paranormal activities reported from time to time, but only a minority acknowledges the legitimacy and possible threat. Okay. One devoted professor... Is dedicated to research. You were hired by the professor to help him continue his research by embarking. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking for. Undertake key missions, engage in side quests, encounter unexpected events, roam and explore. Dude, it's sounding good. Seamless and diverse action. Fluid movements. Responsive sword and shield combat. Handguns, rifles, and bombs. Learn new skills as you progress. Confront unusual monsters. Manage key vitals, scavenge, and hunt for food. Oh, don't give me survival mechanics. Oh. Why'd you have to do that? I mean, I'm still gonna get it. It's really semen. Like, it's gonna be a real solid game. A very varied game. Like, just full of, like, uh, different stuff to do. You know, it might be a quite large experience. That'll be very solid. But we got no idea when it's releasing. Um, Dude, is there anything more about this game? This game that's like totally not explained at all by anything that's happening. That dude does not look pleased to see a series. Like, who the fuck is this kid? <laughs> you just came out of a spaceship. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's like Jet the Far Shore is like you go back in time or forward in time to different civilizations, and then what? It doesn't say what. It just says that you do it, and then, dude, who knows? Okay, so yeah, so just tell, I'll, I'll just, I gotta show the trailer for context. Let's watch it, and then let's read about it. What, what the hell is this?
don't know, it seems like the only reason you would do any of that sort of thing is if, like, your world was doomed. So you gotta go into a different time period and try and settle there or something? Carve out a future for our people. Were those first people our people then, and we just take them wherever we're going? Try and get them to survive in different environments? Year zero. It can't be year zero. Some of us are more than zero years old. That doesn't make any sense. We left on year zero. I was 27 at the time. Oh, so when you were born, it was the year negative 27? Like, through all this, I got. I, I just don't know what we're doing. It's sort of No Man's Sky in terms of like searching out different whatevers. And it's like, okay, I'm watching a lot of just like rockets flying sideways. Are they looking for a particular spot to land, or are you just joyriding, or what's going on? Holiday 2020 doesn't seem likely to me. I haven't heard a thing about this since then. Holiday 2020 has only got like 25 days left in it. Okay, tell me what it is. Interstellar trip to carve out a future for a people. Haunted by Oblivion. Oh, it's that's, those are the exact same things you put in the trailer. In this cinematic action adventure, a scout may be the first to deploy to a mythic ocean planet. So just one planet? Take the helm of a jet and explore a vast unknown. Skim a low over waves, roar a pristine coastlines. Okay. Adapt to an intricate, systemic open world. Persevere through adversity alongside an intimate ensemble cast, huh? None of those people looked different at all. Uh, embark on an exploratory single-player adventure. Five acts... Occasional white knuckle action. Soak in a sea of music and 3D sound. Deploy to the surface. Inspect stuff. Adapt to new perils. So like No Man's Sky. Sort of. When you land. But then what do you do? Investigate a source of a something. Rendezvous a ground control. Scouts struggle to together to satisfy Zhao's directives. So is that like a quest-oriented thing? Endure hardships. Evade pursuers. Grapple with massive creatures. By navigating hazards and outpacing or outsmarting. So it doesn't seem like there's combat. Delve deeper after the campaign's culmination to explore a robust, mysterious endgame. Ooh. Yeah, none of that's still real. Okay, genre. Action, flight, combat? Okay, so it's like mostly the freaking rocket ship. Like that's where the action is. That is unfortunate for you. Unfortunate for me if I play it. Does the PS5 store have themes and avatars in it? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so, because, like, every game has its own theme when you highlight it that just goes over your whole thing. So, like, if I come over to Sackboy here, then it changes the whole screen. And then if I, like, move to Godfall, it changes the whole screen. Complete with music. You know, so it's just like, as you're scrolling, it's like the whole screen's changing anyway. Like, there's always some kind of background. Like, even when you highlight stuff in the store. I guess in that sense, it would be kind of pointless to have a theme, because you would never see it. Because other things would always be in front of it. You know what I mean? 
like Astros player, like even the PS4 games, like Diablo, like they got their own backdrops. So it's just kind of how it goes. Um, but that's basically gonna do it for this stream. We pretty much looked at everything that I wanted to look at. Hold on, is there more stuff for Solar Ash? I don't think so. Solar Ash, the next game from Heart Machine, Hyperlight Drifter, which was a great game. Journey through the surreal, vivid, high, stylized world filled with mystery, wild speed. Yes, adventure, action, fantasy, platformer. Indeed. But you don't show me how the combat is. But I suppose I will watch this again anyway. Mm, get in there, son. Yeah, like you do a lot of roller skating. Some jumping around. You see like a giant white version of you. Ooh, and then get ready for the gameplay. Get ready for the five seconds of gameplay they're gonna show. Oh, you can walk, you can run. You can skate. You can skate with the best of them. And that's all you get. Like, wow, I am intrigued so far. The combat looks tremendous. But you're coming out 2021, huh? Alrighty then. Okay, that's gonna do it for this stream. Annapurna Interactive. These are the people who did Stray. They're, pu or published it anyway. So they're publishing Stray and Solar Ash. They've been busy for the PS5 generation. Uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the stream. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe or whatnot. Can we get an update on how you're doing in Demon Souls? You seem to be getting frustrated with it. Uh, I was not frustrated in the last episode. But yeah, I will see you guys next time.